Hey guys, welcome to another Nosewear Gamer video. Today we're going to take a look at the Activision plug and play system. It's your standard plug and play system, has your composite cables, just one audio and one video. And I like the, the look. I like this kind of rainbow meets the 70s coloring kind of style. It's kind of Activision, an old feeling. You got a reset button, select button to select games, and a start button as well. And it does work running on four AA batteries. The joystick itself feels somewhat cheap and very thin. It could have been a little thicker. And you have two buttons. They both operate the same, one on the side, one on the top of the joystick. But one of the problems is the buttons aren't high enough. So when you push down, you can feel like the outer rim of the molds where the buttons go into. So the feel of it isn't as good as the look. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and take the Activision plug and play system, plug it in my television set and see how it plays today. Let's go to the games. The Activision TV games plug and play was made by Jack Pacific and carries a copyright year of 2004. It originally came out in 2001 in a controller format by a company named Toy Max. However, Jack Pacific bought out Toy Max and used their work to start their own line of plug and play systems. When you start up the unit, you get a simple menu screen similar to the Atari joystick plug and play system I reviewed way back in episode 48. When you choose a game, you get a single screen of instructions, which I thought was a nice touch. First up is Crack Pots. In the game, you sacrifice dozens of flower pots to crush massive icky spiders that are crawling up a wall. I'm all for destroying invading spiders. They're nasty insects and they just need to learn to stay outside. But the game itself is not very entertaining. Next up is Tennis. Just Tennis. You hit a ball back and forth over a net and it's a decent version of the game. The third game is Atlantis, a somewhat confusing entry since it was originally a game made by Imagic, not Activision, but later Activision would get the rights to the Imagic games and include them on compilations such as this one. The game is a combination of Space Invaders meets Missile Command. You shoot one of three bases, all with different aims, but they can be destroyed one at a time. I was never a big fan of this game as I'd rather play Missile Command or Space Invaders instead. Next up is Spider Fighter, a decent little shooter where once again spiders are your enemies. See, spiders are evil, pure evil. The iconic pitfall is next. In it, you jump to avoid enemies and swing on vines. Wait a minute, what in the world did they do with that vine? It looks like a bow constrictor with leprosy. Uh, anyway, you jump to avoid enemies, hop on crocodile heads, and swing on bow constrictors as you try to find treasure. It's one of the best Atari 2600 games of all time, but this version is a little lacking. Ice Hockey is next. It was fun on the 2600 and still pretty fun here. The seventh game is Grand Prix. You race against other cars and avoid obstacles. It's decent. Coming in is Boxing! On the Atari 2600, this game was a blast to play, but this version loses some of its charm. The Popular River Raid is next, and like Pitfall, it is one of the best games on the 2600, but it loses something in this translation. The final game on the system is Freeway. It's basically a frogger without the ability to go left or right, and I'd rather play frogger, but this version compares well to the original 2600 version. Graphically speaking, most of the games do a good job resembling the 2600 originals, with the exception of an occasional minor distortion showing up on screen in some games like boxing, and the weird vines in Pitfall. Sound and music wise, the system does a poor job emulating the 2600 sounds. If you didn't know better, it may not bother you, but for me it's definitely a big step down from the originals. At the time my research on eBay used units were selling for $10 to $15 including shipping. So what did I think of the Activision TV games plug and play system? It's a big disappointment. Graphics and sound aside, the controller actually made some of the classic games like Pitfall and River Raid play worse. It was sorely missing the precision of the original 2600 joystick. In the past, I was able to get to the kill screen of Pitfall. Don't believe me? Just check out my other video titled Pitfall Walkthrough All 32 Treasures and Kill Screen. But with this version, I had trouble lasting a few minutes. And in River Raid, I kept crashing like there was no tomorrow. Some of the games need precision, but the joystick just didn't perform up to snuff for me. Also, I thought they could have switched out a few titles for better Activision games, but I did enjoy Ice Hockey and thought that the top button on the joystick did enhance Spider Fighter a bit, but overall I'm going to give this one a pass. So where am I going to rank the Activision TV games plug and play? 
pretty low. I will give it an edge over the terrible Coleco plug and play unit at number 10, but I'd rather play Wheel of Fortune again than this system. So out of the 11 plug and play systems I've ranked, the Activision TV game system is going to debut in the number 10 position. Activision games are better suited on the 2600 than this unit by far. If you enjoy retro related videos, would you please click the like and subscribe buttons. You can also follow me both on the Facebook or the Twitter. You can also support the show on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash nosweargamer for more information. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Noswear Gamer.